This year for my science fair project, I decided to do something called Biocouture. You may be wondering what Biocouture is. Um, it's a research project that's led by Suzanne Lee from the Art and Design College in London, UK. I found out about this while listening to a TED talk about this new fabric, this biodegradable fabric. Uh, Suzanne got the idea over a conversation with a microbiologist. Uh, this, uh, this textile, which is the mat created by cellulose, is uh, used only by growing by sugar, water, green tea, and kombucha, which is a health drink that contains a special type of bacteria called glucone acetobacter xylinus, and this is what makes the cellulose grow. I looked into Bagatur a bit more, and I realized that the pellicle, which is the mat made by cellulose, uh, is, it is grown to be really, really thick. So what I decided to experiment with was I was going to experiment with like three different types of kombucha tea to see which one would be the best, the strongest, and the thinnest. So what I decided to experiment with was a blueberry mixture, a organic fruit and vegetable waste, and my regular control. I decided to use the blueberry because um, I figured that blueberries had really good vitamins in them, and they could maybe become like the pellico they maybe become a different color, like a purpley sort of thing. And the organic fruit and vegetable waste, I decided to use that one because it was going to have a lot of variety of fruits and vegetables which had lots of vitamins in them, so I thought that, that would boost the uh, growth of the cellulose. So before actually starting my experiment, I wanted to grow a uh, just a couple experiment pellicles just to see which one was the best. So I found three different types at a local food store in Sudbury. Uh, one was a dry tea kombucha, and then there was a mango passion kombucha, which had like the active culture in it, and then there was also an orange flavor, which also had the active culture. So I realized that the mango passion one was the best. And so what I had to do next was I had to actually start my experiment. So what I did was I boiled 12 liters of water, which is for each separate container, so the blueberry, the organic, fruit and vegetable waste, and then the control. I added 1.5 cups of sugar to each batch, and three cups of green tea to each batch. And then I was ready, like the control was good, I didn't need to add anything else to that. And then for the blueberry one, I needed to puree 1.2 kilograms of blueberries and add that to my mixture. And then for the organic fruit and vegetable, I uh, put a variety of fruits and vegetables into the boiled pot. And then once those were all boiled in, I strained them. And then I was ready to uh, start the growth. So what I did after uh, straining it was I separated each pot into four separate containers, and then I had, I had to let it cool down to 30 degrees Celsius, and then I was ready to add the, the active culture, the kombucha tea, into each uh, container. And then after I added each container, I needed to cut up my prior growth into 12 different slices, because I had read in um, an article about Suzanne that she discovered that if she um, put a prior growth into the solution, it speeds up the growth. So I figured that if I were to get a little square of uh, kombucha, it would be able to start the growth a lot faster. So once it was added, my experiment was all ready to go. So I took a daily temperature, which is over here. So you can see it kept at a steady growth. I grew that for 16 days, so just two weeks. So after one week, um, the organic fruit and vegetable waste didn't, hadn't done so good, it was really, really thin, but the blueberry and the control were doing great. They had a mat on top of them, and it was really cool because you could see all the separate thin layers that created one mat into the blueberry. If you look right here, you can see um, that the layers. After two weeks, that was when I finished my experiment. It was really evident to me that the organic fruit and vegetable waste had not done very good. It didn't grow a lot, and the blueberry and the control had done awesome, but you could really tell that the blueberry had done the best. So then I was ready to dry everything out, so in order to do that I had to wash all the pellicles, so I had to drain them, just so that I had the, just the regular mat, um, and then I had to wash it with soapy water. But the, the problem was I couldn't wash the organic fruit and vegetable waste with soapy water because it was so thin that it would have broken. So I just had to leave it the way it was. And so after everything was washed up, I was ready to dry it out. So I dried it on a towel in the sun for four days. But the organic fruit and vegetable waste solution had dried in 
over 12 hours, which is really cool because it was so thin. I think that there wasn't that much water to evaporate. And once I, they were all dry, I was ready to test the strength. So in order to test the strength, I had gotten a set of weights. I had 20 grams, 50 grams, 100 grams, 500 grams, and 5 grams. I was really nervous because I was afraid that the dried pellicles were going to break at 500 grams, but I was really surprised to see that none of them did, except for the organic waste that broke at 50 grams. So then I knew that I needed to get an, a heavier weight to see which one of the control or the Blu-ray was the, the strongest. So I got 3.5 kilograms and 9 kilograms, and it was really cool to see the Blueberry and Control both held 9 kilogram weights. So if you see in this picture right here, I'm, this is the Blueberry Solution, and it's holding up 9 kilograms. So before I tested the strength, I needed to uh, cut each pellicle into four separate pieces because that would have increased the accuracy of each of the, the strips. So two out of the 16 strips for the control are held together at 9 kilograms, and 10 out of the 16 blueberry are stewed together at 9 kilograms. So it was really evident to me that the blueberry control had done the best. And I found it really interesting to see that not only was it really strong and thick, but it had a really interesting purple color to it. And it also kind of smells good. I started to grow microbial cellulose to explore eco-friendly textile in clothing and accessories. It's really interesting about this microbial textile is that it's eco-friendly and it's really cost efficient. The only thing about microbial cellulose is that it's not waterproof. So researchers are trying to find ways of making this microbial cellulose waterproof or hydrophobic, which means waterproof. And I'm really excited to see what they can, you know, discover about this. And I'm actually thinking about sending Suzanne Lee a email about my results from my experiment to tell her that the blueberry solution is the best of all. So maybe she can, maybe you can try to grow that.